I've mentioned a number of times in the past that I've been writing a series of short stories based on the MK universe over the last few years, but I still get comments from people saying I should write my own MK story, suggesting that most of my YouTube audience doesn't know that I actually do. So this little series will be me briefly explaining what each chapter is about and providing links to each one so that more of my audience knows about them and what they're in for. The stories release on DeviantArt, Fanfiction.net and Archive of Our Own. But why this format to showcase it? Well, the idea of a dramatic reading of the chapters has been suggested, but you know I tried a dramatic reading once? Back in the Darksiders Adaptive Difficulty when I had the Bible passages played? That was supposed to be me reading it. I read one line from the White Riders passage and I cringed so hard that I immediately changed my mind. I'm just not suited to that kind of thing. I welcome anyone else who wants to give it a go though. MK Chronicles is a series of short stories set all across the MK timeline ranging from before MK1 to the closing chapters of MK11. While it's not one linear narrative, I do still try to maintain consistent continuity between stories. A lot of the ideas presented on Wasted Potential are explored in greater depth here, with some even getting their start in prose long before I put them on YouTube. Some are attempts at amalgamating or separating alternate takes on certain characters, while others are about exploring or in parts of characters' lives or aspects of their personalities that don't get much focus in the games, understandably so in many cases. I draw on all continuities and sources, from the old timeline to the new one, to the movies and comics, to the MK1 comic bios, with the central narrative deriving primarily from the old timeline. It's kind of like that DC Earth 27 fan project in a way. Sometimes an entire chapter exists solely to present or explore a single small idea, which is pretty typical of me and my stories. But anyway, let's get into it with the very first chapter from exactly four years ago today. And do keep in mind, people voted for full details regardless of spoilers so go and read the series now if that's something that concerns you. Chapter 1 A Brother's Farewell the series as a whole began when I was script in the 2011 Critique Redux. I had an epiphany that the two Sub-Zeros had never actually interacted as humans in any media outside of a single panel flashback in the MK4 prequel comic, so we had no idea what their relationship was like, which seemed an odd thing to omit in the age of cinematic story modes allowing for a more fleshed out version of the early games. The story takes place on the day Bihan is given the task of assassinating Shang Tsung, saying goodbye to his brother before he departs. It's a bit on the short side compared to most of what would come later but I think it works as a decent taste of things to come. Although I've been told it's one of the weaker chapters, which I guess means they got better over time. Chapter 2, The Hero's Legacy. The concepts I presented in Kung Lao's Wasted Potential originated with this story. This is where I fleshed them out before presenting them in a video essay. The story begins with Kung Lao and Liu Kang competing in a match to determine the Shaolin representative at the tournament. Needless to say, Kung Lao loses, and we then follow him as he tries to cope with the crushing sense of failure enveloping him and his entire life, as well as his relationship with his best friend and cousin. And yes, I went with the two being cousins here, as had been theorised in the past, because I think it makes Lao's failure all the more tragic. But rather than being a jealous asshole, a la Shaolin monks, Lao opens up to his cousin and admits that Kang really did nothing wrong, which only makes him feel worse knowing that his feelings are totally unfair to his cousin. They reconcile, and Lao gives Kang their ancestors' bandana and braces, because such attire was first shown being used by the great Kung Lao in the MK1 comic, suggesting it was some kind of champion attire that Liu Kang obtained upon winning his own tournament. These items are set up for a later chapter to advance Lao's arc further. Chapter 3, A Sister's Remembrance. Taking place in the distant past, this story depicts Katana being summoned to Shao Kahn's chamber to have her memories of Sindel's death changed to integrate Melina into them, inspired by ideas I presented in the 2011 critique when I was showcasing how dumb Shao Kahn is and how much better off Outworld would be under Emperor Snake. And no, Quan Chi has nothing to do with it because Shang Tsung is all a Khan needs for mystical shenanigans. The memory alteration part comes from the Malibu comics and some implications from Melina's deception bio. I think she's actually supposed to be a baby when Edenia is conquered in the games, which I wasn't entirely clear on at the time, hence her being an adult in need of memory alteration. Chapter 4, A Brother's Birthright. You've probably picked up on the naming scheme by now and have surmised that this chapter is another Sub-Zero one. Indeed, this one is a direct sequel to the first chapter, with Raiden visiting the Lin Kuei to personally deliver the news of Bihan's demise. This chapter came about because I wanted to answer the question of what third party hired the Lin Kuei to assassinate Shang Tsung, a plot that was dropped after MK2 and subsequently wiped entirely by 2011. Knowing what Bihan was capable of since mythologies two years prior, Raiden is the one who hired the Lin Kuei, wanting Bihan to put his skills 
to use against Goro, which probably would have worked had he gotten that far in the tournament since Bihan beat Goro in both Tournament Edition and the Malibu comics. Chapter 5, The Shadow's Descent, the first of many Melina-centric chapters. This one delves into Melina's psyche as she begins to question her nature in the wake of Kitana's betrayal, which is flashed back to, and Melina's subsequent death and resurrection. This is the point where her mental state begins to become unstable and she begins to truly understand her place in Shao Kahn's plans. There's also a glimpse of her dynamic with the mind-controlled Sindel. Chapter 6, The Kindred Souls. The first to break from the usual naming scheme because the focus here is on two characters. Taking place shortly after her resurrection, this one centres on Sindel's relationship with Ermac and how Jared's place within him affects the two's dynamic. I also included a small bit where Ermac sows seeds of distrust in Shiva towards Motaro to set up her eventually killing the centaur as in the canon, but I've yet to depict that in a story. Chapter 7, The Champion's Curse. This one has two scenes. The first is the night the Great Kung Lao prepared for his second, unfortunately, final tournament with his wife. The second follows the modern Kung Lao explaining the Kung lineage to the young Kung Jin before the match with Liu Kang. I created an entire family tree and history for the family and explained the Liu connection as well. I also further twist the knife with Lao by having each tournament since his ancestor's death include another Kung taking part and losing to really present this as something he's supposed to do but fails. It's mostly an expositional chapter but it gives a bit of insight into how the modern Kungs view their family history, particularly Lao who remains one of the potentially most interesting characters in the entire franchise. Chapter 8, The Princess's Purpose. This chapter is a take on Liu Kang and Kitana's first meeting, but keeping to Kitana not being part of Shang Tsung's entourage. Kitana sneaks onto the island to spy on the tournament and decides to tilt things in Outworld's favour after witnessing each of Liu Kang's matches. I actually quite liked the scene in 2011 and just wanted to give a slightly more fleshed out spin on it. Chapter 9, The Empress's Bodyguard. Shiva fans should like this one. This one relates to Shiva's rise in Shao Kahn's ranks between MK2 and 3. It was born from the question of why Khan would assign such a key task in his plan, the protection of Sindel, to a Shokan in a time when he has demoted the Shokan in favour of the Centaurs. It's like if the Prophet of Truth assigned a random elite the task of obtaining the Index after Regret's death in Halo 2. This chapter gives an answer to that in a way that I don't think most people would expect. Drawing on the idea of Goro having seven wives from the prequel comic bios, I established that Shiva is one of said wives, killing the others and presenting their heads to Khan as a symbol of how dedicated the Shokan are to redeeming themselves in his eyes, which earns his interest quickly, giving her an in to build up to Sindel's bodyguard over time. Chapter 10 the Shadows Return. Not a particularly noteworthy story to end this batch of chapters on, Chapter 10 is set right after Melina's resurrection as Shang Tsung keeps her in his lab and performs various experiments on her, particularly with mind control and other things that will be vital in the Sindel resurrection plot. Because here, her resurrection was just a trial for Sindel's revival. And those are the first 10 chapters of MK Chronicles. There are plenty more where those came from, so please give them a read and I look forward to telling you about more of them. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. For these videos, I want to highlight other creators doing cool and creative things with MKs, such as Bitplax's reimaginings of classic MKs as 3D games, which basically turns the sprites into very accurate 3D models and pans around like a diorama. Cool stuff.